Welcome back, guys, and thanks for taking the time out to spend a little time with me. I definitely appreciate it. And this video will be a lot longer than you would expect, but I think you will enjoy the content. You know, this video has been highly anticipated. You know, guys have wanted me to give my top 10 list or top five list or what have you for Madden 17, but I'm actually going to take it a step further, and I will explain that to you in just a moment. And just to let you know what you're watching here is just some random gameplay. You know, I play now here with the Colts and the Jets, and the rosters are custom provided by my good buddy, Neff1. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it, guys. Like I said, this will be more of a long video, but I think you will enjoy it. So, you know, let's sit back and enjoy the ride. All right, so like I said, man, a lot of people have wanted me to do a top 10 or a top 5 or a top wish list items or what have you, but I'm not going to take the normal approach. And the reason why, you know, being able to work with the developers and things of that nature, you know, I look at the game a lot differently. You know, I look at it from a development standpoint. And what I mean by that is I try to look at things that need to be done first before we can advance to other things. You know, for example, you know, things like, you know, dynamic weather and, you know, the jersey pulls and things like that, you know, real reach tackles. I want all of that stuff in the game, you know, a player likeness and signature animations, all of that stuff. But I think there are things that need to be done first before we can achieve that in order for it to work properly or, you know, work in a manner that we all would appreciate. So I think the things that I'm going to list here, and again, this is just my opinion, but these are the things that I want to see worked on first, whether it's Madden 17 or beyond. You know, I don't know how long it would take to get all of these things taken care of, but here are my top six areas that need to be focused on in order for us to get that great game that we desire. And, you know, I think once these things are done, we can definitely start adding the real bells and whistles. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. First and foremost, Player movement. Player movement definitely has to be done in this game. And when I say done, I'm talking about the fluidity of the movement, you know, the animation quality, uh, the elimination of the warps and shifts, which is something that, you know, Rex Dix Dixon has shared with us himself. That's one of his pain points. You know, like he said, you know, if you haven't heard, he, he did say this on one of our Sim Standard Radio shows that you know around the office their theme is poetry and motion so they are aware of that and, and i'm fully on board with that we got to get that player movement right because when you talk about the great games it's about how they look and feel that's what makes a game great you know if it doesn't look and feel right a lot of times that can throw you off you know and that's actually the problem that some people have with nba live you know they don't feel that it's as smooth and as fluid as an NBA 2K and you know that proves my point right there you got to get that right the players have to you know move and feel right that's first and foremost all right and you know this includes a lot of different areas this includes you know grounding the players to the field that's something that I'm big on I want them to really be connected to that surface you know what I mean where you can see their foot actually planting you know maybe even pressure sensitive maybe get it to a point to where you don't even necessarily need a juke button. It's pressure sensitive based on the stick. You know, if you pull down too far or, you know, you go to a 45 degree angle real hard on the stick, you know, that's a deeper cut or a deeper plant and then agility and footwork and all of that starts to, you know, play a factor. That's what I'm talking about. We need to get that stuff in the game, ground them to that surface, and then things like dynamic weather could really have an effect. Because in my opinion, why throw that in there if, the player is not grounded and the surface is really not tangible what does dynamic weather really do to affect the gameplay you, know, you kind of see where i'm going with it all right the next thing adaptive ai across the board we need these players to have adaptive ai and independent ai ungoverned ai all right and you you're starting to see a lot of these things peak you know, you know, little peaks and hints of it, a little sprinkles of it in the game. Like we do have the QB AI stuff now where the QBs play a lot smarter. You know, the way they will scramble or throw the ball away or, you know, the different types of avoidance. And they're looking for the, you know, the right guy and you can see them going through their progression. That type of stuff is showing itself now, even with the running backs. But now it needs to be spread out to every player. 
You know, we need to see that same type of adaptive AI with the wide receiver. Maybe he notices that the DB is playing him tight or playing in a certain part of the field. So then, you know, now he knows to sit down in the zone. You know, he breaks off his route. He reads the defense and he understands what's happening based off of previous plays. That kind of stuff would be outstanding as well as the defense you know allow the defense to realize you know i've been getting beat on this route i need to cheat inside or i need to you know play over the top a little more and this would just be independent ai and it happens on the fly you know of course you call a play but then you have the player you know thinking on the field those type of behaviors need that kind of stuff and like i said adaptive ai need to be on every single player then you're starting to get that dynamic behavior, right? Now you could do things like, you know, special skills and things like that, because now the AI can, you know, can, can basically go along with that. You know, you would have the AI matching the feature, you know, so if you have player skills and, you know, traits and things like that, allowing these guys to do certain things based off of their, you know, their skills, the AI will, uh, you know, work along with that you know they work hand in hand you understand what i'm saying so we definitely need that the ai system needs to be a fully adaptive on, on every player also physics on all players at all times definitely want to see that happen you know we definitely have physics in the game now i think the bright spot right now would be with tackling the real organic tackles and gang tackles but now we need to start spreading that out to where physics is always on. And I know this is a tough task because all of the players that you have on the field. But we definitely need to get it to that point where all of the players have physics and it's running at all times. So now you get DB and wideout interactions is more physics based. The trench battle is more physics based. So the player's positioning, you know, relative positioning, you know, like where he's standing and where his footwork is and, and you know, the angle that the defense alignment takes on him or what have you and the body mass, all of that matters. Now you're creating real dynamic situations along with players' ratings working along with that. So if you have a guy who is extremely strong and he catches you in a, you know, in a position where you can't get your footwork right, the physics will just take over and he pushes you to the ground. That kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? Get these types of things in the game. And right there, just those three things I've mentioned right there, you see a totally different game, right? And this is before adding anything else. This is just building on what you have and allowing these things to be a factor. All right. And then, of course, you know, with that, the physics would create the outcome. You know, that's kind of my fourth thing. But, you know, it kind of ties into number three physics, basically dictating the outcome. So now when you have DB and wide out interactions, you know, it's not based on an animation. And that's really the fourth thing I want to talk about is independent interaction. You know, untying the animations instead of having two man sequences and things like that allow every interaction to be independent so what i'm saying by that is if you throw up a ball let's say it's a hell mary you throw it up and there's six people around the ball all of them can go for that ball independently the two animations are not joined together to create an outcome or to create beauty if you will because let's let's be honest that's why it happens in video games you know you have to create these sequences so it looks seamless and it looks smooth but I would like to see a sports game take that leap and just let it be free. You know, so again, using my example, you throw the ball up and you got six people going for that ball. And you have no idea what's going to happen because they're all performing different things. And then the physics will di dictate the animation. If they bump or collide in the air, then you're going to see, you know, arms flying and bodies colliding and things like that. But it's no, no longer a uh, two man or three man sequence that's recorded just allow it to play freely and let the physics dictate the outcome and like i said the, the main area that i would like to see that is db and wide interactions now becomes a physical battle as much as you know the animation playing out right as well as the trenches you know again you based on what you do and you know how your your relative position is to your opponent physics will take over and allow you to win that battle so again guys you hear the things that i'm talking about that needs to be 
in the game first before we can take it to the next level. This is just my opinion. Because again, what is the use of having things like signature animation and things like that thrown in the game, but the surface is still not respected? You know, you still have warps and slides, and that would, that would still be something that you would complain about. So in my opinion, you need to take care of these things first. All right? Another thing here in terms of gameplay is more traits. More and more traits. We need to lean towards abilities. And EA, you know, here with Madden, they have it set up now to where they're focusing on traits. Madden 16 focuses more on traits. And I think you have the system in place now blow it out you know we need to have a numerous amount of traits you know even little stuff like look think about a db maybe you have a db and you say this guy plays the short route well he's aggressive he's real good within the first 20 yards suspect in man-to-man -man coverage and any you know pass deep downfield he's suspect in coverage prime example for you guys who watch the Steelers Antoine Blake that's how I feel about him he's not a guy that can sit on the island not at all but he plays rough and tough. He's good inside. I like him in the nickel. So imagine having these type of traits for the corner, different traits on how he plays. Then you can really build your team and you can build your roster and say, okay, I'm going to use him as a nickel versus, you know, just making him my all time, you know, every play down cornerback, right? Even look at the offensive line. Maybe you, you're looking at a tackle and the guy has, you know, great, you know, point of attack you know strong impact blocking and things like that but he has no lateral quickness no lateral movement so in that case you might say well i'm gonna make him a right tackle or maybe even convert him to a guard but he's not gonna be my left tackle with my right hand quarterback because he's not gonna have the lateral quickness to be able to protect the blind side see what i'm saying i mean just you could blow it out i mean so many different traits with route running and things like that just blow that out and allow the game to lean more towards the traits like they're doing in Madden 16. The, you know, there are more traits and you know, the devs have said that the traits will determine certain things. So that's what I'm saying. It's already there. Just blow it out, flush it out. All right. Now, last but not least, CFM death and immersion. We need more things to do, more activities off the field that affects on field things. I mean, like progressive fatigue and progressive injury, you know, things like an NBA 2K16, you know, in my league, which is one of my favorite modes, you know, you can see it on the body. It shows an illustration of what points of the body are affected. You know what I mean? Like a guy might have red on his knee or yellow on the shoulder or green on the arm or whatever. And imagine having that in football. That will actually affect your decision on how you play someone, how much you play them, or if you should bring them back from injury. Things like that. Things like chemistry. You know, if your guy didn't practice and, you know, he's thrown into the game and he didn't practice well or what have you quarterback calls an audible let's say he's a receiver he might not know the play call or he may blow a coverage if he's a db things like that and coaching i want to see coaching really affect the game on the field you know things like that real preparation you know what i mean like i even would like to see you know practice affect the upcoming week more you know not just a free practice and not just xp and things like that i want actual practice time and how they perform in practice to dictate how they perform in the game so let's say i practice with the guy a couple days he's dropping passes yeah his confidence automatically goes down because of that and that might affect his confidence in game not just confidence points you know what i mean i mean there's so many things that we can talk about here it, you know i don't even have the time to run off how many things i would like to see done in cfm but you guys get the gist of what i'm saying just need to flush that out completely you know just make it a full-blown experience especially you know playing as a player you know right now playing as a player is not attractive to me in madden because there's no story there's no storyline at all you know it desperately needs some type of story you know such like uh, my player you know i think 2k did a great job with that with 2k 16 you know would be the story and all of that you need that type of mode in madden to get people interested and playing as a player 
you know, maybe make you go through high school and college, you know, sort of like the road to glory. But things like that would be great. But outside of that, you know, it needs to be more storylines in the regular CFM, you know, playing as a coach or as, you know, an owner, guys getting in trouble, like, you know, really like, you know, maybe a guy makes a bad decision or, you know, PEDs or whatever, you know, just more immersion, more things to have to focus on off the field that affects what happens on the field. You know, like I said, there's numerous things I'm forgetting here, but I think you guys understand what I'm saying. CFM just needs some huge attention, even things like equipment. You know, I know a lot of guys are big on that. So even all of that stuff, you know, needs to be in CFM or what have you. And, you know, my personal opinion would be, you know, you always have the battle between sim players and tourney players or what have you. I think CFM needs to be catered towards the sim experience because mainly hardcore sim guys are the ones who really play CFM. Whereas guys who are more casual or play for fun or freestyle players usually play in your ranked, you know, online games or play now or mutt, draft champions, things like that. So I think it would be great to tailor the experience as the sim experience in CFM. You know, that would be a way that everyone's happy. You know, play your mode. All right, so that's pretty much all I got for you today, guys. I mean, this was a lot, but I think just to recap real quick before the video ends, if we can tackle those things, those elements, especially the gameplay stuff, then it allows us to do so much more the dynamic weather and you know a guy said on our show the other night you know maybe one quarterback has small hands so in the rain or the snow he's not as good stuff like that you know then we could do that all right guys so like always leave your thoughts leave your comments and i promise you it won't hurt you to hit that like button until next time let me know what you think once again guys thanks for coming by and if you want to interact with me live Head on over to Sim Standard Radio every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, along with Smitty and Azure Fat. The call in number for the show is down in the description. Now, of course, for more content, go ahead and click the link above. And before you go, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. All right, guys, until next time, lights out.